All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. This is number 3D4. This is the fourth one in the 3D playlist. Uh, the objects are starting to get a little bit more complicated. And as you can see on the screen here, these are the views that we are going to use in order to build this 3D model. Okay, so it used to be called the P shape, but then I added something on the top and then we did like this chamfer over here. It just makes it a little bit more complicated, um, but it's really for your own good because as we get further along, the more you guys learn, the easier each block becomes. Okay, so here we go. Looking at this right here, we have uh, a front view that is a P shape with that chamfer or 45 degree angle I was talking about. We have a right view which has two squares or two rectangles with that little piece that sticks up. And then we have a top view that's broken up into three rectangles and that piece that sticks up. So my suggestion always is to figure out which one of these is the most complex view and then draw that view first. In this case, it once again is the front view, okay? So this front view is four and a half inches long by two and one half inch tall. Uh, it's got a uh, radius one half circle in the middle there and a radius seven eighth circle that kind of comes out over here, okay? So we're gonna draw that real quick. Four and a half by two and a half. Oh, we're gonna do that over here. We're gonna get rid of this one. All right, so now, first thing, switch to the front. You're drawing the front side. You wanna be on the front side. Make sure you're on 2D wireframe. Anytime we're drawing something, we're working with 2D wireframe. This is going to be 2.5 by 4.5. Um, now the angle, I wouldn't do that quite yet because <laughs> my dog is barking. Hang on. Penny. Her name is Penny. Penny. No. Oh, now she's growling. Um, she likes to bark when the cars go by. So that happens all day long. Um, anyway, so this is three quarters inch tall and this is going to be a radius seven eighths. This one is, let's see, how far are we going to go? Well, if we go one and five eighths from the bottom, we're going to get where that center is going to be. And then we need to figure out where it is this way. So if the radius is seven eighths from the center of the circle outside would be seven eighths as well. So if I measure in one and five eighths, like so, and then I measure in with an offset seven eighths, that's gonna be the center of that circle. That circle is, well, there's two circles there. One of them is a radius one half, that's the small circle. The other one is a, did I get that on the right spot? The other one is seven eighths. I just wanna check the center here. Yep, looks good. So you got two circles like that. So now we can trim this line. We can get rid of these two. Uh, we can trim, well, let's wait. We wanna go here and probably connect at this point and draw down for now. We'll trim the rest off later. We can now trim this. We can do our offset of three quarters of an inch up to there. That means we can trim that and that. And then here's where that 45 comes into play. It's gonna go here and it's gonna go that way. Um, now it's 45 degrees, but a real 45 degrees is gonna go up and to the right. This would be 90, and then this one here would be one, sorry, not 180, 135. Okay, so it's 90 plus 45. So you do the angle sign, you do 45. That's going to streak at just 40. Oh, sorry. Start that again. Angle sign 135, and that's going to streak at just that angle. And then if it gives you an intersection there, you can do that, but I want to make sure I don't get to this midpoint. So I like to just draw that out farther and then trim off the extra. So now we've got this, all right? Now these are gonna have, there's gonna be two objects here. There's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six. That's gonna be a join. And it should say six objects converted to one polyline. Make sure you double check that at the bottom. Um, the circle is already a closed shape, so it's already a polyline, so we're good there. So now we're gonna go back to our default view, which is in the top. We're gonna change to the bottom right corner. This is our 3D view. Don't forget that this is changing the side that you want to draw on, and this is changing just the way you want to look at it. I would not go like this to start drawing on the front initially, and I don't like to go back to the top that way either. I like to just reset back to the top and go back to the bottom right corner. Okay, so we're here. Now, depth of that object is two and three quarters. That's how far back it goes, two and three quarters, right? So we're going to do... 
extrude, we're going to pick both of these and hit enter and go negative two and three quarters. And that sends it back. So that part's done already. This is going to be a hole in there. And as of right now, you can see that it is not a hole. So what we're going to do is subtract from the larger model, enter, and then from the smaller model, enter. And then double check your work on conceptual. And you could even do like a little orbit if you want to make sure that that hole does go all the way through. Anytime you orbit, make sure you hit escape and that you get back on that right corner again. Or if you're not sure which corner is the right one, go back to top and hit the bottom right corner over here again. Okay. So back to 2D wireframe. We have this little object here, which is, let's see, one inch long by a half inch by a half inch. And then it's got chamfers on the corners. So you could just make a box. This is probably the easiest way. If you make a little box that is uh, one by half by half, let's try that. I've never drawn it this way before. So if you use the box tool, this is, this is good because we've never used this before. Uh, click anywhere and hit length down here. Now I'm going to say, okay, this way it's one enter. And then that way is one half. And then it's going to ask you for the up number. That's one half. You can always build things out here and then move it in at that point. So this is actually much easier than the way I drew it initially. Um, you're going to move this from this midpoint and you're going to put it on that midpoint. So now if I go to conceptual, you'll get an idea of where that block is, right? Go back to the correct corner. Now what we need to do, um, we can do one of two things here. We can do the, we can do union and put these two together and hit enter. That makes them one solid model. So now they're all together. And then the last thing would be a chamfer edge. Chamfer edge is your uh, 3D version of chamfer. If I hit distance, and then if I type in my, actually we gotta check on this number, what is the chamfer size? It looks like 1 fourth by 1 fourth. Okay, so they're two distance numbers. So when you hit distance, it asks for two numbers. 1 fourth, 1 fourth. Oh, that's not in anymore, hang on. Chamfer edge, distance, 1 fourth one fourth and then we hit one two now as you can see you can work in conceptual like that it's just sometimes it just gets a little confusing uh, one of these is going to show you what it looks like the second one is going to save it back to 2d wireframe you can see what we have back to conceptual this model is done okay so now what we're doing is we're going back to hidden for printing we're going to the top bottom right corner to reset our view. You guys are going to put line weights on there and then you're going to put your name down here using a 1 fourth inch text height. And that's it. Eight minute video. Not bad. That's 3D4. All right. Thank you for watching. As always, tell all of your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your pets, tell everyone that you know, including people that you don't like, that they should subscribe and watch my videos. All right. I appreciate that. See you guys later. Bye.